so I just wanted to show you a little trick with Colorista 2 that I use all the time to avoid shipping out my footage to DaVinci Resolve or Apple Color or anything like that and to keep it all inside of After Effects or Premiere most of the time honestly and it just makes my workflow so much faster to keep it inside that program to do even some color grading like this. The trick is to use Colorista to qualify your skin tones to achieve the ability to manipulate only the background. And why would you want to do this? Well, to achieve a blockbuster film look, or really a blockbuster look, because I don't think blockbuster movies look much like film anymore. What I'm talking about is what we all know as the Transformers look, which is where your backgrounds are teal, blue, kind of green, cold colors, and your skin tones are just, they're just popping. They're basically like Willy Wonka, Oompa Loompas incarnate here. Transformers is, in my, like, opinion one of the most extreme versions of this but a lot of movies nowadays have this crazy warm skin tones and then the background is a totally blue color and you can see it almost wherever you look and it's kind of funny once you notice it really but the reason it works and a lot of people much smarter than me have done a lot of much better videos than this on how whoops on how it works and that is because those two colors are complementary to each other meaning that they're at opposite ends of the color wheel and colors at opposite ends of the color wheel happen to look fantastic together, and that's just a fact. That's why we choose to make our skin tones this kind of buttercreamy, orangey, beautiful color, and the background's just this cold blue thing that's there. So that's the lesson. Let's jump into the program and see what we can do. So I have this shot from a short film that we shot about a year ago, and it's just a Blackmagic cinema camera footage um, shot in the log profile called Blackmagic Film, so I just kind of brought it up to be a little bit more colorful and bright a Rec 709-ish look. So we're going to add an adjustment layer here and drop on Colorista 2. Forget the primary for now and just look at our secondary correction. Let's go into Edit Key. Now this key or in Colorista is a very powerful feature that's in both the After Effects and Premiere version. And if you don't know how to use it, there are some great tutorials out there on the web about it that you should definitely look up because it's very valuable. I'm just going to be showing you one of the many applications for it today. So basically after your skin is selected you are going to fight back and forth with this and all of these different controls to select only the skin and none of the background and that's looking fairly decent there something like that and then we'll soften it up a whole heck of a lot. Try and get her forehead a little bit better there. There you go. Now click OK. And what we've essentially done is told this secondary correction node here to only affect what we've just selected with the key. So right now, if we change anything, you can see it only affects her skin or the areas that we've keyed. It can be very helpful for changing someone's skin tone or decreasing the saturation of a really, really bright object. But we want the opposite of this. We don't want to affect the skin tone. We want to affect everything but the skin tone. So what we're going to do is add a rectangular mask to this shot. And we'll make the width and the height 100%. We'll toggle down key mode and use the power mask minus key, which is essentially saying affect everything inside of this power mask except for what was keyed, essentially cutting out our skin tones and putting them on top of whatever we do to this layer. So now as you see, I can adjust the background completely without touching any of her skin tones and it will not affect the skin tone that we've selected. Again, you can go in and do a much better, more thorough job of keying out. But as you see, if we just start to drop our midtones toward kind of a cyan blue color, we're getting towards that look we wanted without even doing really any work. And her skin is sitting nicely right on top of that layer. We can even bring down our saturation of the background if you'd like. And if we want her skin to be even more saturated, we can jump back into our primary, add some saturation until we like the color of the skin, and then jump into our secondary, and either just decrease the background or we go into our master and we can decrease the saturation in the entire shot overall. And it's starting to look somewhere nice. And again, if you really wanted to make this shot something beautiful, we would probably go in and mess around with all of this stuff.
So here we have another shot. This one's from an FS700. It's a little James Bond spoof we were doing with these kids. So a traditional way to color grade a shot like this would be just to white balance it possibly and then do a push pull which is the complementary color so we would push maybe our midtones and our um, shadows in opposite directions to get this nice complementary color cast and I've seen this on many 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 DSLR and indie films and it looks pretty good but for some reason it never looks like the movies it never looks like any of these other shots to me it's because those skin tones are contaminated in the shadows and it's not really clean it's not really we're separating the background from the skin we're just pushing different luminance values in different directions so it's not really what we're going for so we'll leave that there as an example I'm just gonna duplicate this and we'll call this one DSLR and this one will be our new one. So we'll drop our Colorista three-way keyer onto this. Let's color balance it. And as you can see there, it brings our background into that kind of nice, uh, into that kind of nice teal color we want. Let's look at his skin real quick. We're getting some good separation there. So maybe we'll do a little bit more this way. Yeah. It's looking pretty good right there. Turn off our skin selector with the S key. Let's jump into our secondary and grab the keyer. Now, grab all of his skin there. And just start messing with it until we get what we're looking for. All right, now we'll again create a rectangular mask and make it uh, really big just to cover the whole frame choose power mask minus key and we should have control over only the background to do with whatever we want and leave our skin tones alone so let's take a look at this and drag our background towards this teal blue color maybe our shadows down that way not too much though Let's leave our highlights pure white, or in fact fight back a little bit, just so his shirt that was white doesn't go totally blue. Looking good. And drop our saturation, attach just a little bit, somewhere like that. Look at where we are. Somewhere like that. And then we can come down to our master here and add more color to those skin tones if we want him to look like Shia LaBeouf. Somewhere right there is pretty accurate, I would say. And maybe drop our overall saturation just a touch more. And there is something that is way closer to that film look than just this push-pull DSLR look to me. Again, it's all a matter of personal preference, but our new look is getting there much closer than that crazy push-pullness. So, in my opinion, I like qualifying the skin tones and dealing with them separately much more. And if we wanted to totally finish off this shot, and to me, that is quite a big difference in the look of the film between the old push-pull method and a little bit of skin qualification thrown in there just to keep our skin nice and clean. One soap is proved better for complexion care. That soap is palm olive. Yes, palm olive. Here's what hey, well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you got something out of that. And now's probably a good time to confess that I am actually partially colorblind. Not like grayscale colorblind, but, uh, you know, blue and purple. It's always been a problem. I'm not going to lie. Are they really different? I'm not sure. It's a real disease. But uh, tests like this, I have no idea what that is, so we'll just guess, right? Thought so.